Did Marissa Harvey's long-lost sister, Miriam, bring her a Christmas miracle in 1977? As an orphan who had never known her real family, Marissa's life seemed to take a positive turn with this unexpected reunion. However, tragedy struck just three months later when her lifeless body was discovered near Sutro Heights Park in San Francisco. Could this cold case be finally solved after over 40 years of uncertainty and pain for Marissa's family? Hi and welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, please consider subscribing as it helps us motivate to create more intriguing content for you. Let's have a look at the disturbing cold case got solved after 44 years. San Francisco, often referred to as the city by the bay, is a city of contrasts and enigmatic tales. Its diverse landscape boasts iconic landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge, which stands as a symbol of the city's outer. The bridge spans majestically across the bay, offering breathtaking views that draw tourists and locals alike. Beyond the famous bridge, San Francisco is blessed with beautiful beaches and pristine parks that offer a welcome escape from bustling city life. The city's parks, such as Sutro Heights Park, where Marissa's lifeless body was tragically discovered, provide serene settings where people can unwind and connect with nature. In addition to its vibrant social life, San Francisco boasts a thriving entrepreneurial culture, attracting ambitious individuals from various industries. Despite its vibrant energy and outer, San Francisco is also renowned for its safety, especially when compared to other large cities in the United States. With a relatively low rate of violent crime, it is considered one of the safest major cities in the country. The city's law enforcement and community efforts have worked to maintain a sense of security, allowing residents and visitors to enjoy their time without constant fear. However, as Marissa's cold case demonstrates, even in a city known for its beauty and safety, tragedy can strike unexpectedly. Marissa Harvey, a life full of adventure and kindness, Marissa Rolf Harvey began her life as an orphan in New York. She did not know who her real family was. When she was three years old, she was taken in by a loving family in Port Washington, New York. There, she found a home and a sense of connection. Marissa was said to be a unique and daring young girl who loved to ride horses and discover new things. She spent her summers in Europe riding her bike through beautiful places to satisfy her need for excitement. But underneath her spirit of adventure was a kind heart. Marissa was known for helping people without expecting anything in return. She would spend hours shoveling snow for her senior neighbors and lending a hand to those who needed it. Even though Marissa was happy with her foster family, she always had a secret wish to find out more about her real family. The Christmas Reunion On Christmas Day in 1977, a strange woman named Miriam Wadiv showed up at Marissa's family's home in Port Washington. This changed Marissa's life in a way she had not expected. Miriam said that she was Marissa's long-lost sister, which was a big surprise. Miriam said that, with the help of a professional research business, she was on a never-ending mission to find her beloved younger sister. Marissa felt a mix of things when she heard about this long-lost family reunion. Joy, curiosity, and fear. Her parents were hesitant at first to let her go to California by herself, but in the end, they agreed because they knew how important this moment was for Marissa. Miriam's request gave Marissa the chance to meet her biological family and find out about the parts of her identity she was missing. The Tragic Trip to San Francisco In 1978, when Easter break was coming up, Marissa's folks thought it would be a good time for her to go to San Francisco. Miriam was happy to see Marissa at San Francisco International Airport, and she drove her to her apartment. Marissa was both excited and nervous about the idea of spending time with her sister and finding out who her real family was. The days Marissa spent with Miriam were full of fun and happiness, and they gave her moments she will never forget. As Marissa's trip was coming to an end, she made a simple request to Miriam. On her last day in San Francisco, she wanted to go horseback riding. Because Miriam had to work, she asked a friend to take Marissa to the stables for her. That day, nobody knew that the stables were closed. Tragedy Strikes 
As the day went on, and Marissa still had not come home, Miriam became more and more worried. She told the police that her sister was missing, and a big search started. The next night, on March 28, 1978, a young guy walking near Sutro Heights Park found the dead body of a young girl hiding in a bush. It was the badly hurt body of Marissa. When the cops got there, it was clear that Marissa had been severely hurt. According to the coroner's report, she had been beaten, strangled with a cord-like object, and raped. The news sent shockwaves through the town, and the investigation started in earnest. But despite their best efforts, the cops were unable to find any suspects, and the case soon went cold. The case goes cold. The San Francisco Police Department used all of its resources and technologies at the time, but because it did not have any good leads or evidence, the case finally went cold. Marissa's family and the police were left with a lot of unanswered questions for 42 long years. They were unable to find peace or justice for the young girl whose life was cut short in such a tragic way. In October 2020, the cold case team of the San Francisco Police Department chose to look into Marissa's case again. After decades of waiting, they were ready to give Marissa and her family justice with the help of new analytical tools and ways to investigate. A breakthrough in 2021. The restarting of Marissa's cold case was a turning point in the investigation. The investigators used advanced DNA technology to get into a third-party DNA database, which led them to a major success. The database found a match between the suspect's DNA and the DNA of a cousin, Mark Personet, a 76-year-old guy from Conifer, Colorado, was named as the suspect. With this important piece of information, the San Francisco Police Department's Homicide Unit, the San Francisco District Attorney's Office, the FBI, and the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office in Colorado came together to make a task force. Together, they worked harder to find more proof against Personet and build a strong case against him. A dark past comes to light. As detectives looked into Mark Personet's past, they found a disturbing trend. Personet had a history of attacking young women, especially when he was young, going back to the late 1970s. In New Jersey in 1980, he beat up a 16-year-old girl and was charged with serious assault. Surprisingly, he got away before the case went to court, leaving the victim, the police, and everyone else angry and without justice. With this shocking piece of information, it was clear that Mark Personet had hurt young women before. There was a lot of proof that he was involved in Marissa's death, and the police were more determined than ever to bring him to justice for his terrible actions, arrests, and charges. On March 15, 2021, the San Francisco Police Department, the FBI, and the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office worked together to arrest Mark Personet 35 miles southwest of his home in Conifer, Colorado. He was charged with one count of murder for the death of Marissa Harvey, who was 15 years old. Personet was arrested without bail, and his DNA was matched to a sample of DNA found at the scene of the crime. This made the case against him stronger, and the long-awaited moment for him to take responsibility for Marissa's sad death had finally come. Going to court and the legal process. Mark Personet went to court in San Francisco on January 10, 2022, for killing Marissa Harvey. Adam Gassner, Personet's defense attorney, pointed out that the case was old and complicated when Personet pleaded not guilty. He also promised a full and in-depth investigation to make sure justice was done. As the trial went on, the prosecution showed the proof they had collected over many years, which painted a clear picture of Personet's guilt. Witnesses, forensic experts, and police all backed up the case against him. Even though time had passed, the law system made sure that Personet would finally have to answer for what he had done. Not only could Marissa get justice at the trial, but it could also shed light on other cold cases where Personet might have been involved. Closure and Justice after 44 years, Marissa Harvey's family finally got answers about the crime that haunted them. The case's resolution demonstrates the power of persistence 
advancements in DNA technology, and collaboration between agencies, Marissa's memory will endure as a symbol of strength and the search for justice. Thank you for joining us on this journey to unravel the long-standing mystery of Marissa Harvey's tragic case. The resolution of this cold case after 44 years of uncertainty stands as a testament to the power of determination and the advancements in DNA technology. Marissa's memory will live on as a symbol of strength and the pursuit of justice. If you found this video intriguing and informative, please consider subscribing to our channel to stay updated on more cold cases and fascinating stories from around the world.